Hi, I'm Heather, and we're here at the Sons of Utah Pioneers. We're getting ready to have our parade on the 24th of July, and we're also getting ready for Brigham's Ball coming up in January. If you were gonna have one Pioneer dress that can do fancy or not fancy, this is the dress you wanna have. So here we have it as a ball gown, and this shoulder piece comes off. If you were ever going to go on trek, this would just be a nice, simple, not too hot way to go. Or if you want to have a nice day dress, to wear in the 24th of July parade. Here is our day dress for Pioneer Day. So let's get started, we'll break it down. For our workshop coming up, I've asked that everyone bring your own fabric and matching single fold bias tape. There are different ways that you can get your fabric. There's 45 inch fabric, there's 60 inch fabric, and then you can also use a king size set of sheets. That includes the top sheet and the bottom sheet. Now for anyone sewing at home, there's also a few more things that you're going to want to have on hand that for our class I'll be providing. So you need some canvas. This can be medium to heavy duty canvas, but not duck weight canvas. We don't need to go quite that far. This is gonna help weight down the bottom hem of your skirt. And two buttons and one and a quarter yards of a uh, half inch elastic. We have patterns available by PDF that should be linked in with our video. We have these available in 11 by 17 size or also gonna make it available in eight and a half by 11 for anyone who's printing at home. It takes multiple pages to get one pattern all together. Uh, for today, we already have cut them up and taped them together. One thing I wanna show you when you're taping together your pieces, cause this is four pages put together, uh, these little tick marks here, if you get them lined up, you can't go wrong. Another thing that I want to point out is uh, notches. Home sewing notches have a big triangle and some people like to cut out the big triangles. I don't like to do that because it, it compromises your seam allowances. So we do little ticks, but I put them in the form of, of T just so that you can tell that this isn't a mistake. This just means I want you to make one little snip right here and right here, but don't make the whole T because if you cut that whole T again, it'll compromise your seam. One thing that you might want to be interested in throughout the industry as far as patterns go, one little notch means that's for the front and two little notches means that's for the back. This should be universal through home sewing patterns and industrial patterns. Sometimes if they have multiple layers going back and back and back, they'll have one in the front and then two and then three and then four and then five as they're going further and further back. And so that's kind of how you can find your way around if you have a really complicated pattern. But for this, we have one front and one back with one sleeve. So this right here, what we're looking at is our sleeve with a front and it's gonna wrap around your arm to the back. So you can see where that little back notch goes. So once you have these all uh, cut out and taped together, and all of your little tick marks are lining up so that we know what we're doing, uh, then we'll get started. We'll lay this all out on our fabric. Okay, so here we have our 45 inch fabric. The first thing we want to do is measure out the skirting because of course that's gonna be the largest thing. We wanna make sure that we have enough room before we start on our smaller pieces. So the length of this fabric should be enough for most people to be able to get from their waist to the floor. Uh, most people will have a little bit extra unless you're really, really tall. If you're really, really tall, you want to take it in segments from the floor to your natural waist place. That's where you go in the most. Um, and that's gonna be a little bit different on everyone. And that way you'll go bottom to top, bottom to top. But right now for, for this, we're going to go uh, top to bottom this way. So the width, we want 144 inches. That's gonna be four yards broken down into inches. So here we're going to measure. So 60 and 60 is 120 plus 24 is 144. So I have this pin marked at 144 inches. 
And now we're going to do the rest of our pieces. So uh, the front and the back are done on the fold. So this is my fold line. These are my selvage edge here. So I pinned it here and the fold line has these big roundy arrows going on your pattern pieces. And then here we have your blouse sleeve. So you'll see that these have graded sizes. They're basically small, medium, large, extra large, but they're not in your typical sizes of small, medium, large, and extra large that you would see at the store. This is the only part that we're gonna measure is here where the shirt is gonna come around and under your arm and where the shirt will end on your back. So if I can get my extra pair of magic hands to come help me measure and we'll demonstrate this for you. So our measurements are 14 is the smallest one, 15 and a quarter, 16 and a half and 18 and one quarter. And so we're going to figure out which one we want. So if you could put that like, like right about there, that's actually right about right. And the important thing is to rest your arm comfortably because um, it's going to change shape as you do weird things with it. You'll rest. Want that to cover. Yeah, you'll want that to. So that way you can figure out exactly how this is going to lay generally. You don't want it to hike all the way up your armpit, but you're, so just make sure it's in a, a comfortable place. And then you'll know which size to do. Another thing we want to do is measure your circumference around your widest point. And that's right around your middle. As the whole thing goes over, you want it to be large enough to, to be a pullover. This is a pullover shirt, and uh, you want it to go around your shoulders and shimmying into all the way on. Okay, so now we've measured out our skirting. We've laid out our, our smaller pieces. This is our back, our front, and our sleeve of the blouse. And we have a little bit left over that we can use for trims, like the collar and cuffs and fun things that we're going to do later. Well, let's go ahead and save that for later, and we'll come to it when we're done with everything else. Okay, here we're going to lay out our um, king size set of sheets. So this is a set that includes both the top sheet and the bottom sheet. It also includes pillowcases, which is kind of fun when you get your project all done. You can fold it all up and keep it in one of those pillowcases in the cabinet, and then you always know exactly what's inside. So let's start with our skirt. As usual, we always start with the biggest thing first. Uh, here I have our flat sheet. You can see it has a top pocket. There's, it's all flat. There's no elastic. So first, what we're going to do is find the edges and completely open it up. Second, we're going to find our top pocket. This is the part that you would have at the top of your bed, and we are going to cut that right off. So I've snipped my fabric about half an inch to an inch away from the edge here. Don't, don't go more than an inch or you're going to end up changing the size of your skirt but right about there is a good place to start. And then we're just gonna rip it off. We're gonna set that aside for later because we're actually going to cut our waistband out of this piece. So now we know where that top of the sheet was because it's ripped off and we have hemmed edges all the way on the other three sides. So we're going to fold the top to the bottom. Let's go ahead and cut that one off so we don't get confused. So this is the bottom. We have our top ripped side, 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 bottom. And that is what we're ripping off right here.
Now this I'm throwing away. I'm going to turn this around so you can see it better. So here's my ripped edge. Here's my hemmed edge. Remember this was the side. And here's my ripped bottom. And now we're going to fold it in half with the ripped sides together. One of the things I want to find out right now is if this is long enough. And yes, that is long enough to be a skirt for me. So this is a good place. Fold it in half to rip it again. We're going to rip it right down the middle of the sheet. All right, I'm going to uh, fold this up and leave it for sewing because at this point it is ready to start sewing. The entire top sheet, the entire flat sheet will be your skirt and the rest of the shirt pieces will cut out of the bottom fitted sheet. Now probably the most valuable part of this video will be how to get this much fabric it's bigger than I can hold, gathered in to that waistband. That's going to be the fun part of this class. So here's our top pocket and let me explain how if you're sewing for yourself or a friend, wrap it around their waist, add an extra six inches or so, so there's plenty of overlap and plenty of fudge room. So there's a hem right there. We're going to go ahead and cut that hem off too. So, so I'm holding my mark. I pinched it with my finger. I'm holding my mark and I'm going to cut it there and throw that away. And then I'm also going to cut off this hem on the other side. So now these two pieces Are ready for sewing. All right now we're going to start cutting into our um, bottom fitted sheet. The first thing we want to do because have you ever tried to fold a fitted sheet? It's a little bit obnoxious so the first thing we're going to do is get it flat and we're going to cut off anything that's not flat. So I'm going to open it up on the inside so that you can really see what I'm doing and we're going to cut off the elastic part So let's see how far we can rip that. So I've come to a corner pocket and I'm just going to cut right over it and rip some more. Now the grain will always rip straight so don't be afraid of ripping all over the place especially where you, it's difficult to see direction. Um, in, in this kind of a situation. So again, we've come to the next pocket. We're going to cut right over it and it'll, the grain will rip straight again down the other side. And you'll notice in some places it's very narrow and in some places it's a little bit wider. They don't always sew it straight in the factory. They do the best they can, but it's not always as perfect as we like to see. And here we've met up with where we started, but again, it wasn't straight, so. And there we are at the last pocket. So now what we have is all the elastic is gone, but we still have our pockets sewn in. So if you can see, this is the part that would go around my mattress. This, we're just gonna cut it right off. Okay, so now we're going to have this L shape cut out of our 
corner and we're going to have to work around that for all the other corners. That's just the name of the game with working with sheets. There. So this is our last corner. All right. So here we have our bottom sheet. And being that this is a king size sheet, it should be reasonably square. Not entirely, but mostly. So we're gonna fold it in half the best we can with our funny corners. All right, now that I have that folded sort of in half, I'm gonna follow this folded edge. It's a little cattywampus because it's wrinkly. It's not entirely straight. We'll see if we can straighten that out just a little bit. And then we'll fold it again. Now this is something I can work with as far as cutting out, so let's take it back to the table. All right, so we've cut off all the edges of our fitted bottom sheet and uh, we've folded it in half. Here I am at one corner. Uh, just because I know in later I'm going to want collars and cuffs and all kinds of little things, I'm going to go ahead and cut this section off. I'm going to start up here and I'm going to rip it just because I know that's going to give me uh, a straight edge because it'll rip right down the grain. And uh, I'm going to do one inch in from the end. And then that'll give me one full length straight edge. So I'm going to set this aside for later. And now I know that this is the straight of grain. Um, it's difficult to say if it's the length or if it's the warp or the weft or the length or the width of the fabric, um, but we know it is straight. And at this point, the, the length or the width doesn't really matter. We just don't want it diagonal. So I don't know about you, but all of these wrinkles get a little bit annoying. So I'm going to use a spray bottle and I'm gonna lightly mist it and press them out with my hands, um, especially with cotton fabrics, cottons and wool. Uh, it works amazingly well. So I sprayed it one direction, or I sprayed it and pr pressed it one direction. I'm going to do the same thing on the other direction. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the other side the same way. And it's not going to be perfect, but it'll at least be enough that it won't mess up our sizing and, and stuff. And while we're on the subject of shaping our fabric, when you get it all sewn up and it's all done, Go soak it in the bathtub for a minute and then hang it up on a hanger and that'll get you that vintage, fresh line, dried look to it. And uh, usually the weight of all that water in the bottom will pull it down and you'll get all the new creases in all the right places. It's kind of cool looking. All right, let's turn it over. So it's not perfect, but it's manageable. So we have our one long uh, ripped edge that has that goes the full length of, uh, of one side. So I've folded that over uh, just wide enough so that we can get our pattern pieces on. Uh, this fits these, the, uh, the front and back really, really well, but the sleeve is going to need a little bit more space. So I'm going to cut these out and then I'll have, I'll be able to fold it over a little bit more to get the sleeve. Okay. 
And I'll cut these apart so they're easier to manage. And then I'll come back and cut these out. And now I have plenty of room to maneuver. So the important part of uh, cutting into fabric that isn't fresh off a bolt from the fabric store is making sure we have our straight edges that were ripped with the grain and that we're lining everything up with that. And as long as you can keep that going, you'll never go wrong. Um, another thing is sometimes the print is straight and sometimes the print is not straight to the grain. Uh, sometimes with uh, plaids or printed stripes, um, they might be a little bit off. Uh, luckily with sheets, a lot of times the stripes are often woven, which means the, the weaving went all the way through the fabric and they're not just painted on the top, which this is painted on the top, but um, that's not a problem. When we were going over the instructions with the 45 inch cutting, we explained our sizes. And uh, so you can figure out which sizes you want. Keep in mind as you're measuring around that uh, you're gonna have this whole sleeve going up and over the top. So don't be afraid to, to go with a smaller size if you feel that that's where you want it to be. It's gonna kind of come in this way, both in the front and the back. Uh, with our with our sleeve pattern here, this is for a long sleeve. If you want, and notice that this is a little bit rounded at the end. It makes for a really nice, uh, for it to hang really nicely. Um, notice that if you want to cut it into a shorter sleeve, we have a line here for you to cut and it makes it poof out just a little bit at the bottom. It's really nice. So we're gonna go ahead and pin this straight. So, if you are following a straight of grain, uh, the way that I have it here, where these pages are taped together, that really is my straight of grain. So I'm gonna line those up to be pretty straight right there. Then we'll throw some pins in. All right, well, we have our shirt cut out. We have our skirt folded up somewhere. Um, and we have all the rest of this to uh, play with for cuffs and collars, which will be plenty. And who knows, if you wanna make a, a separate shawl that matches, which was very common for the time, um, there's plenty to, to play with left over. So now we're gonna move on to actually sewing. And this is exciting because it's gonna go up really fast and start taking shape. I have my three pieces here for our shirt. Uh, and if you'll remember, when we cut these out in the pattern, we, left, we cut little tiny snips. So we have this little tiny snip. We don't want it to be any bigger than that because it'll get messed up in our seam allowance. So this tells me one snip means that this is a front piece. So we have, this is gonna be your neckline, this is gonna be your armhole and your side seam. So we have our front, our back, and our sleeve. We're gonna take one sleeve, we're gonna sew it onto your front, and let's make sure that our little snips match and line up in the right place. So here's our two snips, that means that's the back. We'll come around and find the one snip and then we'll put our right sides together, match up our little snips. So uh, I know it sounds a little strange, but we're actually gonna start this in the armhole instead of the top or the bottom or anywhere else. Uh, we're sewing it together in the armhole first. The way that these patterns are set up is not with your normal large seam allowance. I like to take it right to the edge of the, of the presser foot. Now, <clears throat> it's gonna be tricky to keep track of where everything is at because it's all gonna start to look the same in the minute. Keep in mind that uh, your, uh, your sleeve piece has the front and back and your front piece only has front snips. 
So this is my front, this is my sleeve. So now I'm gonna get the other sleeve and we'll sew that onto the front as well. So again, we have our single snip with our single snip. We're putting right sides together. There's one more little trick that we can do so that we can keep track of where all these pieces are because after a while these little snips are going to get lost in our seam allowance. So we're going to write a little, this is the front and I'm just, I'm keeping it that close to the edge. All right. So here we have our front, our sleeve and our sleeve. Now we're going to connect the back to the sleeves. Now, if you're at home and you accidentally think you get mixed up between the back and the sleeve and you sew a sleeve where the back is supposed to go and a back where the sleeve is supposed to go, just find your little nips, mark in the middle, this is the back, this is the sleeve, and uh, you will, you, you'll probably have to pick it out. Um, this is where the most confusion is going to be. If you've got it right, that's awesome. If you don't, I make this mistake a hundred times. So um, I have been sewing this pattern for 30 years uh, and I still make this mistake. All right, now the only thing left is to connect our final panels. And just to make sure that we got everything the way we want, it should match up with our little notches, our little snips. And I have a back snip and a back snip. All right, now that was the hardest part of this, of this, this pattern. So let's find our little back and front. There's my front. There's my back. So with right sides together, can you see how it's starting to take shape into a body with sleeves? So we are going to take our sleeve and right sides together. Come all the way down. The most important part actually is that it meets in at the seam line. Um, if there's a little extra on one side or the other at the bottom of your body or at the end of your sleeve, that's okay. Uh, we can cut that off. What we cannot do is readjust where this seam lines up. So we want the seam to stay. We want to match the front seams and the back seams together. We're going to match those right there. And I just, with the seam allowance there, I've tried it all different ways, whether you press them open. Uh, I think one of my favorites right now lately is to do one flap one way and one flap the other way. Yeah, so I start at the armpit and then go out to the sleeve and out to the, but I'm actually starting at the end of the sleeve and it's gonna be one long seam. I've just matched it up. Now, um, I forgot to warn you, I, I don't like to use pins. Uh, so this is a time where you need to keep readjusting every little bit to um, make sure you don't sew over anything underneath. Uh, my little rule of thumb was always only sew what you know, if you understand what you're doing, uh, if not figure it out first, and only sew what you can see. Now here's that underarm seam. We're going to sew right over, but it's getting bunched up again, so I'm going to pull it out. And we're going to turn it right around. I'm going to go right around that corner. So this hand is always feeling as I'm going, part of what I'm doing is making sure that there's no folds underneath 
because that's when it can get all crumply up inside and end up getting all up underneath and into your stitching, which we don't want. So everything on the table here needs to be flat and smooth. I can tell that there are two layers of fabric underneath my hand with no folds or crinkles underneath it. And here's the bottom of my body piece, or the bodice, as a lot of people like to call it. And now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. If you have an overlock machine, this would be a great seam to overlock. In the meantime, when we're not using one today, so I'm going to zigzag this because, um, so I'm going to do my zigzag stitch, and uh, it'll take the place of an overlocking. So this way it won't unravel and get grody on the inside with several washings. All right, and that is secure and it is not going to unravel in the wash. And we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, here's a good example. So you see how there's a little bit extra at the end here. Um, we'll just cut that off later. That's not a big deal. But we want this to be the same. That's the important part. Okay, again, we are going to zigzag stitch the edge. This is going to sound a little goofy, but I always get to this point and I say, ooh, it looks like a shirt. I'm so excited. So I want to see if, if it fits. And again, I'm going to say, okay, wait, what was the front and what was the back? Here's the front. And this way I can say, okay, this is going to go all the way around. Now keep in mind, this is that peasant blouse style. Um, the shoulder's going to come all the way up here, this underarm, that part that we measured before. This is where we see kind of where that's going to go. So it's all going to be gathered with an elastic around the top here. So I know my sleeve is definitely long enough. My bottom is long enough to be tucked in and, and stay tucked in. Um, my top is, you know, we'll see how, in, I think it's, it's going to be great. Um, from here, we are going to do our casing. So we're have, we had each of you get the single fold bias tape. This is the easiest way to do it because you don't have to make your own. You don't have to worry about seam allowance. Um, you could roll this over. Um, we did not allow enough seam allowance for that, but you could fold it over by a quarter inch and then fold it over again by about half to three quarters of an inch. Being that our elastic is a half inch wide, you're going to want at about three quarters of an inch to give it enough room to go in the channel. This pattern particularly has a little bit rounded of a neck. Um, so with that a bit of roundedness, you're going to want to use bias tape. The bias tape is made on the bias, which means it has a little bit of give to it. Uh, it'll, it'll move a little bit. I wouldn't quite call it stretchy but it's made to go around a certain degree of curve that folding straight over um, will not allow you to do. So this is going to be the casing that we're going to run our elastic through. So I like to notice where are my seam allowances going. We're going to start on the right side. So right sides together. We're going to open up one side and we're going to end up stitching right in that, right on the line of that fold. And um, we're going to line up the edges, these raw edges, right to each other. And then we're going to stitch right in that fold. So we're going to, and we're going to go all the way around. And when we're done with the other side and we come back to this point, we're going to overlap it just a little bit. And come to think of it, just for good measure, we're going to fold this over so that when we fold it over, it'll have a really nice folded edge. Okay, I want to make sure I'm going straight again. So we've folded over this edge, the, the end edge here, uh, just a bit. And now we're doing, um, we're probably going to keep this side uh, folded the whole time, but we're going to open up this side. We're matching the 
raw edges together and we're going to stitch right in this crease. Okay, so now we're getting ready to meet up where we began. And again, we want to make sure that this fold line goes right where that stitching line was. We're going to overlap it just a bit. Right about to there. Do our little back stitch. And now we're ready to take it off. So those were our starting threads. These are our ending threads. We're going to cut off and then we're going to use the rest of this on our sleeves. So save that for later. Don't throw it away yet. Um, and now we're going to turn it over. And when we're done turning it all the way over, we're going to fold that. And that will be our finished edge. Isn't that nice? So now we're going to turn it over and do it again. Well, sort of. So the important part here is that we have a nice crisp fold. Some people like to uh, press this first and you might want to, it might be easier um, feeding it into the machine if you press this fold right here. Um, if it's going to be fudgy at all, we want it to air on the side of this way and not on the side of this way. And the reason why is because then it'll show on the outside. Um, but preferably, if we don't have too much fudginess at all, that's always better. So I'm I'm not going to start all the way at the top because at some point uh, I want it to be open. In fact, actually, I think right now just for, we'll probably start it here because we want it to be open enough to get our elastic in and out before we finish it off all entirely. So we'll probably start right about there. Oh, and we're going backwards. Now, if you haven't begun this yet, let's make sure, and I didn't pay attention this time. It's great if all of our seam allowance is going the same direction because then when we put our elastic through, it won't get stuck uh, going against the grain or against, you know, the flow. Um, we'll see how it goes. So this one, so far they're all facing away from me. That's great. And this one's facing away from me. It doesn't matter what direction they're facing as long as they're all the same. I had a little extra. It's, we don't need that in there to gum up our elastic, so I'm just snipped it off. So to do elastic, I know some people have real good mathematical ways of doing it. Um, I've never been able to be successful at that on a regular basis. So I just kind of drape it where I want it and figure I want it about, about that much. Um, and then I say, hmm, is that enough to kind of, okay, go where I want it to go. So sewing at home, you're going to need about a yard and a half. And that's total for the whole project. So to get elastic into this casing, um, there's all kinds of fancy tools, but uh, I use safety pins because you just can't go wrong with safety pins. Um, sometimes we always want to anchor the back end uh, because sometimes you end up pulling it all the way through and man, that's a bummer to fish out. 
It's not impossible, but it's just not fun. So if you remember, all of our seam allowance is going this direction, so our elastic is also gonna go this direction. If it was facing the other way, we'd go the other way. It doesn't really matter, but we just wanna make sure it'll get through um, easily. Okay, so you can see where we have our opening here. And we have, so between these stitches here and here, we have all this room to get our elastic in and out. So we're going to put the uh, safety pin, which we have connected with our elastic. We have it anchored at the bottom so it doesn't get sucked through. And we're gonna push it from the end. And then we're gonna pull it through. And keep pushing and we'll just go all the way around. And now see how it's a little, it's always a little tough getting over those seam allowances, so we really want them all going the same direction. So as we're coming to the end, you can tell it's a really good thing we had our anchor there because it wanted to get sucked up. And then we'll poke it right out here. To be honest, I usually just tie it in a knot, but if you want it to be nice and flat, uh, I like to do a zigzag stitch lengthwise. So we have it overlapped about an inch or so, maybe three quarters of an inch. Okay, that'll be plenty strong enough to hold it. And, and sewing stretchy stuff is always really tricky, so you just do the best you can, and it'll all go in pretty nice. Okay, before I sew that shut, I get excited again and say, oh my goodness, it looks like a shirt. I wanna try it on again and make sure it is the way I want before I sew this shut, because if I want to um, pull the elastic a little bit tighter, now's the time to do it before I have it all nice and finished. So. So now it's easy to know what's the back because this open spot is in the back. I think that's just about right. Maybe a little bit tighter. We'll take up some of these gathers here. Get it a little tighter around the shoulder. We do want it nice and snug right under the arm so we have full range of movement. If you get it too blousey under here, it'll pull up your whole shirt as you lift your arm. So I think that feels good, but I think I'd like a little bit more snugness right here. So we'll make it a little bit tighter. Okay, so here's our shirt uh, so far, and we're going to finish off this casing where our elastic went through. We're going to tuck under the underside, and then we're gonna tuck under the overside. So we're going to fold it the way it wants to be folded. It'll be just as nice as how it arrived from the factory. So see how this is sticking out? We're going to tuck that in as we sew. But we want to make sure that this corner right there gets turned under really nice. So, so we're going to pull some of the gathers away so they don't get in the way. And um, anytime you're sewing with elastic involved, you wanna stretch it out um, so it doesn't get in the way. Or, so if you, if you sew over elastic while it is unstretched, you're going to uh, take the stretch right out. You're gonna be stabilizing the stretches instead of allowing them to open and move. So, so we always wanna be stretching it out kind of turned under inside. We'll get that straight. 
we're going to tuck that little guy in. And if he just will not stay tucked, we can even cut a little bit of that corner off. Right there. Don't cut your elastic. You know, just stabilize one little part at a time. And eventually it'll all come in line. Okay, we're gonna start backwards. Ah, we're gonna start straight and backwards. And there's that. So no matter how perfect we ever make this, it's always going to have a little bit of extra thread on it. So whenever you're curious about what the front and the back is, that's how you're going to know. It's a little bit of extra thread and this is where your opening is. Um, so if you're going to put a tag in, that's a good place to put your tag. Um, it's always fun to say this was lovingly handmade by me. All right, so now that we've done this to the neck, let's do it to the wrists. Okay, so here's where, remember when we were sewing this together before and we decided to have it match at the underarm seam and we had a little bit of left over here. Here's where we're gonna just, guess what? That never happened. I want, well, and then, but I also want it to be big enough to be pushed up my arm without becoming uncomfortable. So let's just use the whole thing. So actually, one and a half yards will be perfect. So for this one, I'm going to anchor it to the seam because it's going to be a little bit stronger. The, the cuff or wrist elastic is shorter. And so sometimes it gets a lot more tight inside as we're going around. It's, it's a shorter amount of elastic going around uh, still quite a big space. So I'm pinching this right here because I can feel that this elastic wants to suck right into the channel. So I'm, I'm hanging on to it so it doesn't run away from me. So we're going to um, put these together and stitch them the same as we did before. So there we have our neck. We have our sleeves. Now we're going to hem the bottom and we'll be done. There's lots of different ways to hem the bottom of a shirt. Um, so if you'll remember at the beginning, we had a little bit of extra hanging off the end of one side. What I'm going to do here is turn this over uh, about a quarter inch and then I'm going to go back again and turn it over a half an inch. So we're going to, so I've turned it a, ha a quarter inch and I'm going to just stitch right down the middle of that turned side.
Um, my beginning students, I always encourage them to uh, measure, pin, and press first. And after about 10 years, you'll, you'll go faster. Okay, now I'm going to turn it over about a half inch. So the purpose of that first one was just to make sure that we don't have a raw edge here. It's a nice finished edge on the inside, and then we'll have a nice finished edge on the outside. We're going to go about half an inch, and we're going to keep the, the needle or the, 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 the thread close to this inside edge. And there we have it. So the basic shirt is finished.